Okay, this is in response. This is in response to a question which I have received my, from, from my co-workers. In fact, I was told that if um, uh, look, I guess that if I'm just not going to fall down, uh, you know, if I'm going to continue to stand up on my feet, it's the kind of questions I would be asked because it would indirectly suggest that we will know nothing about you. We will not help you out. So where I was from, I'm going to tell you where I am from. The video is titled Pollock in a Nutshell. Uh, it's at least what I personally can tell. I know about the Polish people or I knew about the Polish people um, from the past. My, maybe I, the experience, the experience with the Polish people from the past, since I was a child, I grew up in Slovenia. Um, not exactly alongside the Adriatic Sea, but in a way we do have like a 20 kilometer coast. Uh, Croatia is the one that has like this beautiful long coast. Uh, and that's where the Polish people would uh, wander here and there. I would say hopefully, uh, I think that I personally as a human being, this is what I would want. I would want to see them. I, I desire their presence. It's, it was, it's, it's a good feeling that somebody comes from, I'm going to say let's Poland. This is basically how you feel about it. It's always a good thing when, you know, diversity is just a good thing. Whether that be a Russian or that be whatever person, uh, interesting Slavic person that would come and you would be you would be just uh, curious about, uh, you know, you want to observe the individual and learn about these people as much as possible without, you know, this having this ability without even having to have to go to, uh, to their country. Uh, you can just share maybe stuff, uh, get to know person and stuff like this. But, but this here, this is really, this is really my account about since my childhood about the Polish people, my experience, even that this is something that Mr. Well, the individual, let's say a president, a current president of Slovenia, Borut Pahor, who was involved in his MK Ultra throughout uh, in Poland and then also in the Russia and so on. Uh, he, he probably would have sent me and they have invested a considerable amount of effort to change my mind about it. Uh, as far as the foreign people, I was told, don't even think about doing something like this. Uh, but if you're, let's say, to the Buckingham Palace. Um, here's what it is. Pollock in a nutshell. I remember them coming to Slovenia, really poor. They would sell products from China, uh, really cheap products that would be quite unusual products because Slovenia was part of Yugoslavia back then too. And so we alone, we were like a closed regime with way better standard, financial standard, I'm not saying better people. I'm just saying that this is what the situation was. It was very hard situation in Eastern Europe, a very tough situation. And so some would do this and they could pay themselves a trip to Adriatic. Others would do this as a business. I guess that Yugoslavia was one of the countries that, that these people were allowed to come or something like this. Um, and so, and the, and Adriatic, 
you know, you would go down the street and you would be, sir, sir, do you buy this? You know, the, can you buy this and this and that? Would you like to buy? In Adriatic, shirts would disappear from your, um, you know, you would dry them outside. Shirts would disappear and those shirts would be then either sold, resold, or used for the personal use by these people. A people equal them with aromas. I have to be honest that they were not, as a guest, it was not exactly a good news um, to see them around because you know that things are going to disappear. Nothing good is about to come to you. Under MK Ultra, I have observed engorgement from these people. This later years now, maybe I can mention in between only that. Well, that was just characteristic for all the societies that were occupied by the Soviet Union. They would, um, the societies were extremely impoverished. Uh, extremely impoverished to the point they would not have um, forget about cars and stuff like this uh, they would be hiding literally the products domestic products or products in China that will sell in their stores uh, under the shelves uh, they would run with them into the storage area whenever we would appear over there in their country with the money because they know that we're going to purchase uh, products and then it's going to be nothing left for them. Uh, it, it's a really sad stuff about the Eastern Europe that went on. Okay. Under MK Ultra, however, I have to say they engorged. They were excited, they were thrilled about the torture. They enjoyed the torture. I have experienced that they, they were fascinated by possibility of performing torture on an individual and it didn't matter to them the standing of an individual, like that he did not commit the crime, that, that completely innocent from another country individual they dealt with, that they tortured. They saw an individual whatever they wanted to see in one, which is suggesting a heavy presence of a paranoia. This is the country that has a prevailing rate of schizophrenia. Uh, and they also invested not only in, I was heavily brainwashed by this Gershon police, by the Lodzhan police, by the police in Vitebsk, by the police in Minsk, now I'm talking about Belarus, the last two cities were in Belarus, and even by the Russian police, where I can eat in the city. If I would become hungry, where you can sit and eat, so you will not look as stupid as Americans who are here. This shit is recorded, make no mistake. This is a reality show. It's a repeated, it's a, it's a rehearsal, or you want to call not only of MK Ultra, but of reality show. They had these young Americans here. They have video recorded and play with that stuff under the table with selected people. I have already explained that and this shit goes on. Make no mistake about that. Uh, you know, this, first of all, this young American people that were here didn't steal or do any bad from anybody to anybody. The only thing they did was they performed a work, outstanding work for the locals. They tried to impress them as much as possible. And thanks to the U.S., 
not the Donald Trump whom they glorify so much, um, you know, that much about the stupid Americans. In a parenthesis, it's stupid Americans because it, it, it looks like the, for the Pollocks is stupid, you know, a little worker from somewhere that I guess came here to see the country, experience the country and like I said have done close to free job for the so-called people trying to impress them, exchange the cultural ties with them. And while on the other hand you have a Klux Klux Klan neo-Nazi leader that is choking America today and the world with his issues openly. At that time it was not open yet, now it's openly that they are trying to place him a memorial for Trump. Um, you know, they try to glorify him in, in, during the times like this, like pushing forward like a, like a Polish god, hero, literally. So this is about more about the convenience rather than ethics. So I would say that they are extremely, extremely unethical people. I would say that they stuck in the Soviet times when many of them were exiled to Siberia, tortured by the Russians. It's just that now they have their own piece of land and they feel seems like they can now do stuff to other people as well. Um, And so it was not only about that kind of stuff that, 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 that you were told, you know, where you can sit so you're not going to look stupid, so you're not going to look incompetent in front of whoever is watching this stuff. And I have explained that police in Zgirsh alone told me that they do have cameras all over the city and in a special locations, definitely were designated locations therefore where you are like it or not guided through real estate uh, issues. Uh, in the city you cannot post anything anywhere that you're looking for a place or something like this. It disappears within like 30 minutes even less simultaneously as you post it goes off. Uh, not only this, the bicycle that where you can change the gears uh, routinely, frequently, uh, whenever I park one, I find one in a lowest gear, wherever I go. Um, so that pretty much explains you basically what goes on here. Not only they were instructed where you can go and take uh, a snack, sit, not gonna sit on a sidewalk because I don't do that and go and sit on a sidewalk but on a bench and how long you can stay on that bench eating your meal whatever snack yeah this is pretty bad folks uh, you know Eastern Europe when we came to the Eastern Europe this place was so filthy that uh, it was like uh, I mean forget it I mean the Borat Power Slovenian delegation, when they came to the Vitebsk, when they came to Minsk, they were like horrified alone first when they came. They insisted that the whole city have to be cleaned up for something like that, whatever they had in mind to happen. Obviously, they tried to impress the city. Is cities Eastern, in Eastern Europe are now I'm going to say outstandingly clean. They are doing a really, really good job. And Slava, a lawyer from Vitebs, reminded me for just a fraction of the money on what is spent in the West. They do outstanding jobs like this. But I don't see this as outstanding at all because this is on the surface. On the subverses, when you go to the local forest and you go to the side streets, you can see like a tons of bottles, alcohol, vodka, smashed all over the place, cans, nobody cleans after that. It's a, actually, it's a really broken society here. It's not exactly like you see the picture on the surface. 
this picture has some other pictures in the background but through I have to remind of this stuff let's say the Russians for the first time the Eastern Europeans learn about the bidet was when they visited our house over there in Slovenia in Novo Mesto um, it was so strange to them bidet unusual uh, their architecture in Eastern Europe was so poor it was in Poland was already way better than in Russia uh, houses it's way better built but still really poor uh, compared to the West or compared to the stuff they have, they were doing already over there in Slovenia and Croatia and so on Serbia too and so on Yugoslavia was way ahead of these people these people were completely exhausted from the Soviet Union so they learn about what the bidet is and my, my goodness Mr. Yuri over there who was involved in this MK Ultra would just start the issue that you know involved the hygiene uh, on you know how it is well inappropriately to wash your rear uh, and stuff like this and things started to develop about bidet and so on and so he reminded me of this kind of stuff too and so this is very very unusual stuff and I'm just giving you my background of what I know myself what I have experienced I'm not saying I'm not touching books and books don't talk impressive about either these people had a war not only with the Germans they had a war with the Russians I can also understand but it's a little bit difficult then when it goes further they had the war with the Ukrainians too uh, and even with a little tiny Czech people unimpressed really um, these are not the only issues they touched if this isn't bad enough other issues they touched and they tried to it's why they did a lot of this stuff were issues concerning a mental health issues and so it was that type of stuff that they feared as well would not uh, settle in a proper pr place in my mind uh, in respect to the people and they came up boy with a variety of ways not only with a theft stealing burglaries vandalism in a private environment but things started to happen at work as well a whole load a whole set of things that went to the degree that it was totally controlling environment they created um, this is a video a special video I'm gonna have to dedicate so that you will understand really what what kind of stuff went on um, I see this right now I get to see this thing here uh, I'm saying this now the commercial I don't know can you see it the commercial changed they're popping me the stuff like this and I will explain to you how they do it I took a screenshot so then I can I can I can show you I can demonstrate you what this this looks like you see it looks like this uh, these are just the commercials uh, but I was told by people under MK Ultra is, is the companies you're gonna use the internet companies you're gonna use they're gonna shoot the commercials they shoot their commercials so this is also a very very controlled environment when it comes to the internet here in Poland but regarding the work I'm just gonna say computer would when I started to work uh, disconnect itself frequently I had a feeling somebody's watching and simply disconnecting all the time 
uh, whenever you would have him, you would have to repeatedly log your survey in, put your numbers inside, put the numbers of article inside, so then you could scan items, weigh them, and go on with it. Um, so disturbing stuff that it would dement you completely. Yeah, I think that if I would not be mentally strong, I would be completely, totally destroyed. You would fail. It would break you apart. Um, you have no idea what kind of elements they have involved in this process. Disturbing elements. Um, yeah, and I can't help myself. Really, the other day I saw this huge, huge board over there. It's a lot of people in Poland that protest against this, rightfully. I claim that Alzheimer, dementia, and all these things are man-made diseases for the most part. There is no, when it comes to genetics, it's actually very, very questionable. You know, after I'm going, the stuff I eat, it's actually quite questionable uh, what exactly is uh, that. To what degree that they have really effect on it. Um, it's a society that is impressed with stuff like this, doing stuff like this to the people. It's a society that is impressed, you know, with all types of methods that were used under the Soviet Union. Is not this himself? I don't see like anybody here pledging like for the human rights for the sake of the people that would say you know just not too long ago there was a lady that depicted maria in a gay uh fashion and i can tell you they lock her up i think or whatever they did on top of the giving her i don't know what kind of a fine and so on nothing good happened to her a persecution of kaczynski against her uh, really violent, irrational stuff. Stuff you take in a Western society for granted. Something that is, uh, you know, she committed like the worst crime possible. Worse than, uh, I guess, if she would do something to someone and so on. So I think that the society is scared. That people are scared about uh, the prospect of life here. By the way, Really, my prognosis for Kaczynski's economy became reality, and he really did uh, boosted prices. Uh, inflation started to skyrocket. Not only this, he is killing the wages. He is going after the wages of the people and he is equaling them. In other words, he tried to place push everybody on a minimum wage now as a result of his uh, pre-elections. So it's it's just, um, I don't even know how I would refer to it. And it's a funny thing, he insists, by the way, on a, on a, on, on a quite interesting issues that right now I'm not going to touch in this video. Uh, issues like that Poland is, uh, I don't know, no longer we don't want to do a hard labor jobs and so forth. And I was exposed, I am right now doing a really hard labor job. And I would just say to that, that, you know, everybody did this kind of jobs. Chinese did, Americans did. Everybody had to go through this before they have elevated society into academic societies. But the academic society means that you have to accept these things uh, and learn from them and elevate it. So you have to, in other words, pay your price, welcome investors from whatever world, background, um, you know, give them a chance, give chance to, to your people foremost to have a bread, to have jobs. Uh, and then if you can show some more, then you know, things happen, but they don't happen with your smack in the table and demanding something uh, to be done about it. 
while uh, actually Kaczynski never even held any, any hard labor job. Uh, this is just a man with a teacup in his hands and I think with a really good background, a torture background. A showman actually, a movie star. So it's a little bit strange to see people like this in politics, I admit. On the first place, it's like you would put the elephant really inside of the porcelain store, I think. It goes likewise for the Putin. I think that a trucking job would be just the right one for him. Nothing is a trucker, so I was one. Putin not. But it's just he doesn't fit into the stuff he did. Basically split the entire Slavic society into pieces. Put some salt on old wounds and stuff like this. It doesn't work like this. Okay. Especially it doesn't work like this when you consider that it was mostly Ukrainian people that were used for those types of super hard labor jobs. In a company where I work it's mostly Ukrainian people. Uh, Poland exploited heavily Ukrainian people for advancement. And believe me, the hardest jobs they did in Poland that were done in Poland were actually done by Ukrainian people. They pay the price, the biggest price. And sure enough, it was European Union that kept Ukraine and Ukrainian leaders too. Foremost Ukrainian leaders, I believe, down on knees out of the European Union so that stuff could happen. So I wouldn't even go into those kind of issues either. I would rather concern myself with real issues that are breaking the society, uh, that are dividing the society. Let's go back to this issue here. Because um, this isn't the idea, it's not to insult anybody here. I'm just trying to answer, I'm just trying to give you a reminder of where I am from because this is what I'm going to be doing when you're going to be asking this kind of questions after torturing me, after subjecting me to the torture asking this kind of questions is very very inappropriate and I have my response to that I'm not going to bend down on knees and allow you to insult, cough around me basically extort with some idea that if I'm not going to see it like this, if I'm not going to deny myself, you know, if basically will not allow some you to kill God in me, literally, that is just, it's how it's going to be. It's not going to be like this. Um, the torture itself, the MKR for torture, I was fascinated by a joy experiencing their experience with ability to torture. They engorged, they indulged, they laughed like mad, entertained themselves to a complete madness degree. I'm going to remind you, Pollocks, of the couple over there in which a gentleman is Polish, a wife is from a, a Caucasian part, must be some Uzbekistan, maybe even something like this. It was a madness. Drugs, sex, you're going to say this stuff happens all over the world. It does. And I'm, and I'm not saying it's not. Uh, I am just giving you out my experience, my real experience with the Polacks, with the Polish people. So you can understand what my experience was with you and basically how I see your past as how I see me going through all this stuff, where I'm coming from, basically. So, just a reminder of that kind of stuff. Sure enough, there are very good Polish people that objected to this stuff. 
unfortunately their voice was not heard enough during the MKUltra torture and today their voice is still not heard hard enough, loud enough if it can be heard at all uh, so this is just I am giving you um, a complete background about my experience with the Polish people they are extremely I'm gonna say methodistic materialistic super materialistic people uh, in a contrast of what was the situation in a country when we came here uh, they quite boosted out uh, their new founded wealth issues in an element where they interjected me back so that I would acknowledge uh, as painful as enough new reality in which I as an American citizen from Slovenia have nothing in the pocket literally would go out there and ask for the jobs from house to house for two euros an hour and they would have this luxurious residences they have built it themselves with German technology uh, and American credits basically this is just uh, just a Poland in a nutshell from my point of view from my past um, and the Poland of today uh, nobody's gonna kill God in me nobody I will never allow anybody to kill God in me I still stay strong proud and tall defined in the face of the beast and will not comply with any kind of humiliations uh, will not get down on knees in front of anybody I will get down on knees like this you're not gonna do this uh, praise a dignity uh, so you can humiliate one and so on it doesn't work this with me I mean, the foremost it's important for the person to know where he is coming from so that question actually was really good I know where I am coming from uh, and I also know where I'm heading with you or without you as simple as this but nobody's gonna kill God in me and and put me down on me humiliate me like this this isn't gonna happen that's just a bad mistake okay this is my experience uh, with a Poland with a pause in the past and in the present it isn't all the present is quite fascinating it's quite fascinating that you would go to the degree that you would actually destroy individual even a glasses uh, put him in this kind of environment and so on this is just completely fascinating totally fascinating country folks